Lord be with you. Welcome to worship, all of you who are here in the sanctuary. If you've returned to us or you're visiting with us, and um, welcome to all of you who are worshiping through the camera right now in this um, time or perhaps later in the week. This is the second Sunday of Lent, and we are learning how to love our neighbor, love our enemy, love the stranger. Um, this is our classroom, our classroom learning to love. And so may we look to the source of love, the one who is named love in our scripture, our God um, who surrounds us now and calls us to worship. Let us breathe in the very breath of God. And allow our God to call us into this very sacred time. Let us worship God. Good morning. Please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship as printed in your order of worship. God provides for us in desert or oasis, in times of plenty and in times of want. God's loving kindness is everywhere. God guides us in times of ease and in times of trial. God's light surrounds us and leads us in every circumstance. Because of God's providence and loving kindness, we come to worship and are sent to serve. Let us worship the God of love. May be seated. This morning the call to confession is from the book of Psalms. Those who love me, I will deliver. 
I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Generous God, as the ravens fed Elijah in the wilderness, you provide for us. But all too often, we do not realize the depth and breadth of your mercy. When our lives go well, we somehow believe that things work out because we are clever or hardworking or lucky. We may even persuade ourselves that the struggles of others are because they are undeserving or lazy or unfortunate. Forgive us. Give us a clear vision to see that your mercy and generosity never run out and that we can always find a way to be generous with others and with ourselves. Help us to be transformed by your grace so that we can transform our words of love into acts of service. We pray in the name of the one who came not to be served, but to serve, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Beloved of God, hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins or repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love toward those who fear God. As far as the east is from the west. So far, God removes our transgressions from us, so rejoice and be glad. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us then forgive one another and pass the peace of Christ to each other. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us share the peace of Christ around in the sanctuary, especially if it's somebody that you don't know who is near you. Um, pass the peace of Christ to each other and, and to those who are worshiping elsewhere or at another time. Peace be with you. I know that my children are home because we had some car trouble this morning and I think I saw Michelle go to the nursery to find whatever children are there and if there are Sometimes we have 20 children sitting up front, but I think they all called each other and decided not to be here this morning. Um, so if you're feeling young at heart, I know that the children's sermons of Michelle and Peggy are great, so please come forward. We'll do it next week. Okay. We're going we're gonna to get the memo out to those kids that if they decided not to be here this week, they've got to be here next week. They can't miss the Michelle and Peggy show. I mean, it's not... No. So now we just... Now we just wait. <laughs> um, I would like to invite um, Judy uh, to speak about coffee hour. Judy Spies is a ruling elder, not serving on the session now, um, and serves um, as a member of the outreach committee. So thank you.
Good morning. Good morning. Coming soon, again. Outreach is going to try our best to reinstate coffee hour. <laughs> there will be a sign-up sheet placed on the double doors to the Edith Boyd Lounge very soon. And we'll see how this goes. We know that some of us are cautious. Some of us are very anxious to get this going again. But we don't know how many volunteers we have to start the coffee. We want it to be simple, so we're going to keep it simple. Start some coffee. If you want to bring something to share, let's just give ourselves some time for fellowship after worship service. So when you see the sign-up sheet up there and you want to pick a Sunday to just do a little something, we appreciate it. And we will know by the sheet if we've got one or not. And Erica can announce it on a Sunday morning by seeing it or you can check it yourselves. Let's, let's reinstate this if we have the man or woman power to do so. And I think we do. Let's just be gentle with each other and give it a try. I Something have a simple. Yes. If I would like to host coffee hour and all I am able to do because of my budget or my time, all I'm able to do is to start the coffee and make sure that the cups are out and the supplies that are here in the church are out so that we can have fellowship. Can I sign up? Yes. Good idea. Did you hear that? Good idea. Okay. We don't even have to have anything but coffee. Maybe we'll work through it that way and see how it goes. I think we all need this. I think we, most of us want this. So let's Let's see what we can do. It can, you can sign up all by yourself because it's going to be simple. Start simple. coffee, maybe put a plate of something out. It doesn't have to be anything big deal. Maybe with a friend, maybe the deacons or the session or the Elizabeth Circle or anybody else that would like to, let's get a couple people, let's do this. The men's group. The men's group. Okay, coffee hours coming back. Look for the sign up sheet. It'll be up this week. Thank you. Thank you. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. God of shining splendor, your, your voice, voice makes, makes the, the earth, earth tremble in wonder. wonder. Overshadow, Overshadow us, us with your spirit, spirit so that, so that we, we may hear your word and live as faithful, faithful disciples and covenant, covenant people. people. Through, Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Today's first scripture lesson is from the Old Testament, the Book of Kings. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks now to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. Then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says that the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family, for the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord as spoken by Elisha. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. 
And so now, as we have just heard, um, as Brian has read the Old Testament lesson, the story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath, <clears throat> two strangers who really could have dismissed one another, and they would have missed the miracle. I'm going to read now another story of two strangers and their interaction with one another. This um, does come from the Gospel according to John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Listen now for the word of God. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that, whatever believe, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. I was telling the adult education group this morning that I think it was May of 2020 when I found myself in my car, very unsafely, I know there are no kids in here, but kids, if you're watching somewhere else, all of you young at heart, I was doing something very unsafe, and that was looking at my phone, texts and emails at a red light. Why do that? It feels safe, but it's not. Something could happen at that red light, but I was no matter what. And I was, um, uh, reading something that was causing me a little bit of concern about maybe um, some divisive conversations or thoughts within our own congregation. And on the radio, there was um, uh, some sort of um, story about something happening on the national um, <clears throat> front of uh, two groups of people being... Um, opposed to one another, 
And I was also within myself remembering that um, this child needed to have this turned in for e-learning and that child needed to um, have this conversation with this teacher. And I was also remembering an agenda that I needed to get ready for this other congregation for their session and then another one for our session. And as all of this was happening, I, um, I felt I realized that my left foot, well, my right foot is my driving foot, right? My left foot was actually, I don't know if you can imagine doing this, my left foot was in a fist. Like I, can, I, I had turned my ankle in the car and I had fisted, <laughs> I, I had turned my foot into a fist, taking on the conflict, the, the differing of opinions, the anger at one another, the, the names being called to each other, and not just the stupid head and um, <laughs> whatever names my children were calling each other at home. I left them at home for a little while, just for a break from the, you know, farty pants that they were calling each other. There was conflict on the national scene, the world scene, the congregational scene, the presbytery scene. And there was conflict about whether or not mom was going to, that's me, get dinner ready that night. <clears throat> so I was coming home from the grocery store. So you can imagine why I, um, the next day, when I saw that there was this workshop that the Presbytery was offering to us for free to, to take online through Zoom, um, this uh, workshop about how to lead um, in a time of extreme, you know, divisive rhetoric and feeling and emotions and thoughts. Um, I joked with the adult ed class this morning that I just was bored and thought I'd take a workshop. I don't know what that would have had to, had to do with anything that was happening in May of 2020. I really wanted a panacea. I wanted the magic words. I wanted the ability to come in and say, look at me, I'm your leader and I'm going to make this better. found out it's not as easy as that. And yet there was a word that I have since found has made its way through our culture in so many other um, avenues. The leader, her name was Susan Beaumont, she said the real key when there are opposing forces, the real key when you're about ready to blow your top, Steam is coming out of your ears. Get curious. Don't get mad. Don't get angry. Get curious. Ask the person in front of you or the person who tries to start an argument in the comments of whatever you posted on Facebook. Tell me more about why you feel that way. When did you first start thinking about that? Tell me more about what I have, how what I have said has sparked this response from you. I'm curious. And maybe don't even let it be about the conflict. I'm curious. Tell me more about your day. How was your breakfast? How's your family? And then there's that question that Many of you have received from me as your pastor. How is your spirit? I'm curious. And it's not just curiosity because you want to, um, what's the new thing? You want to sip that tea? Apparently that's like if you want to like get, I know I just learned this, Janice. Um, you want to sip that tea because you want to you get the gossip, right? That's the new thing. There, there are people who know about this. Some of you might be out there, or maybe you're watching on the video. It's not about that. It's not so that you can learn something juicy about somebody so that you can go and tell someone else. It's not curiosity, like, what went wrong in that person's life today for them to be so crabby? 
You might be thinking that. <laughs> but really, the curiosity is what moves to the miracle. There was a miracle that happened for Elijah and the widow of Zarephath and her son and the rest of her household. And the, the, the miracle would have been missed if either one had chosen not to be curious. When they met each other, Elijah was in a strange land. They could have decided, oh, that's a stranger. I'm not even talking to you. And yet, Elijah trusted that her food was not poisonous. He trusted that she knew how to take this meal and mix it with oil to feed him. And she trusted... somehow, maybe out of desperation, that this prophet of God might have something to bring her out of her despair, because she was ready to die. They were curious rather than conflictive, rather than saying, well, if you only have enough for you and your son, well, then I don't even want to ask for any. Or, how dare you, coming from the widow, how dare you ask me for something to eat when I barely have anything for my family? But rather, they were curious. I want to know more about this stranger. And in learning more about one another is when God moves in and creates it so they continue to have the flour and the oil to make food. Much like when Jesus multiplied the fish and the loaves. Those who were here, those who were there when he multiplied the fish and the loaves, they would have known this story really well. Curiosity. What do you think we can do with these two fish and these loaves? Nicodemus and Jesus were opposing individuals on this scene that we find them on in John 3. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, and not only was he a Pharisee, but he was a leader within the Pharisees. It's not that he was like a new follower and thought, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to follow the Pharisees or I'm going to go see what this Jesus guy has to say. No, he was a leader of the Pharisees opposing Jesus. The Pharisees were the ones who were there to keep the law, and this Jesus guy kept on breaking those laws. And yet he was curious. Curious enough to invite Jesus to come over at night, please. I don't want anyone seeing me <laughs> engaging you in conversation. And Jesus accepted the invitation. Curious enough to find out what this Pharisee wanted from him. Was he there to test him? Was this conversation maybe the conversation that would lead to his arrest and crucifixion? He didn't know, but he was curious enough to find out. And you notice how they keep asking each other questions? Nicodemus wants to know more. And I don't know if you've seen this statement recently that's been going around social media about how um, <clears throat> Jesus asks more questions percentage-wise than he gives statements. So he's asked things, but then he asks things of Nicodemus. And he repeats himself, knowing that Nicodemus is, is curious and, and waiting to hear more, wanting to know more, but really confused. How can I get back in my mother's womb? What are you talking about being born from above, born from the Spirit? Oh, Jesus says it a couple of times. This loving of stranger is, is, is um, 
uh, explained to us and described to us in Scripture as something that we, we um, as Christians, learn to be reflexive about. That the loving of the stranger and the being hosp- hospitable is, is our reflexive response. That kindness is our reflexive response. But being reflexive doesn't mean that it's easy. Just because it is what tends to come naturally as we continue to practice the spiritual discipline of kindness, it doesn't mean that it's easy. It is a discipline. And if you've ever been part of a discipline of reading or learning another language or the discipline of learning an instrument, the discipline of maybe a martial arts, it doesn't come easy, but the muscle memory can become reflexive, right? But that comes from some very, very hard work of taking that deep breath. I once um, noticed myself. <laughs> you know, have you ever, did you ever look at yourself and realize that you had become one of your parents? I'm not sure when it was. <laughs> But there was this moment that I was just, we were doing chores, and I was really frustrated. I think we were outside, and I was either sweating or maybe my hair had just, like, not fully dried. And um, <laughs> it brought me back to this moment where my, when my dad had all three of us in the garage, and the same thing was true for him. I don't know if it was that he was sweaty or maybe his hair hadn't fully dried from the shower, but it was cold outside, and you can imagine what was happening, right? There was the steam, and we all just, you know, steam's coming out of dad's ears. He's so mad at us. We thought it was so funny. It was really funny until it happened to me. And that moment before we start taking it out on someone else, and that moment before we call someone else a name, and that moment before we use that cutting criticism, or we push that button that we know is just the right button, God calls us to be curious. Jesus probably had a lot of things to say to Nicodemus, this Pharisee. You law-abiding, um, strict, making no room for the Holy Spirit, thinking that God's love is going to come from having all of these things. You, you probably would have had a lot of things to say to him. And Nicodemus probably had a lot of words to say to Jesus. Elijah, we were talking this morning in adult education, who knows if the widow of Zarephath was also a follower of Baal, um, as was Jezebel, and he was this prophet who was to lead people to the one God of Israel. He probably had some words to say to this woman, and she had some words to maybe to him. How dare you come and tell us about God when we're just hungry? They became curious learned more about one another. And the miracle happened. Jesus was able to tell about the miracle. We are not here to condemn one another. I am the son of God, and I have not come here to condemn the world, but to love the world. That is the salvation of it all. It's described in our hymn, this morning. Jesus sought me when a stranger. Why do we choose to get curious about the stranger who's asking for help or the stranger who um, we just disagree with on all levels? Because Jesus sought me. Jesus sought you when a stranger Wandering from the fold of God, he do rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. And I know there are are so many things that we can talk about 
as far as um, good boundaries, I tell my kids when they're walking here in the Uptown Arts District, if someone asks them for directions, they're to say, could you, could you go and ask an adult I'm a kid? Because that's the safest thing. But we're not teaching our kids that all strangers are bad. We're just saying that's the best thing to do at the time. So yes, there are safety precautions to put on, but just because there are safety precautions doesn't mean that we can't get curious and doesn't mean that we can't cross boundaries and barriers to meet the stranger. To make ourselves vulnerable, to ask those questions of somebody who is very different from us the things that we would like to know and to answer those questions and to be vulnerable in that way. The miracle happened for the widow and for Elijah when they were vulnerable enough to cross that boundary. Maybe curiosity didn't kill the cat. Maybe curiosity could save the cat. Maybe we could try. Maybe it could be our discipline. Won't be easy, but we could get to the point where it's reflexive. Amen.
Please stand as you are able and join me in the affirmation of faith. We share one faith, have one calling, are of one soul and one mind, have one God and Father, are filled with one spirit, are baptized with one baptism, eat of one bread and drink of one cup, confess one name, are obedient to one Lord, work for one cause and share one hope. Together we come to know the height and the breadth and the depth of the love of Christ, are built up to the stature of Christ, to the new humanity, know and bear one another's burdens, thereby fulfilling the law of Christ that we meet one another and build up one another, admonishing and comforting one another, that we suffer with one another for the sake of righteousness. Together we pray, together we serve God in this world. You may be seated. It is now our custom within the worship service to respond to God's good word in the giving of our offering. And the offering plate is always at the entrance to our sanctuary uh, for you to use when you come, when you go, or in the middle of the service. Um, and also this uh, link or this um, uh, QR code can be used for giving online um, or even um, the old-fashioned mail system. However you give, let us spend this time in meditation about the ways in which we respond to God by the giving of our gifts and our talents.
Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for the devotion and the hope and the joy that has gone into the giving of these gifts. We ask that you might call us as a congregation to know just how to use these gifts to live into the ministry you have given to us. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Um, we do have a, a few concerns of the church that um, Deacon Brian Spies will bring to us. So you already heard about the sign-up sheet for coffee hour. There's also a sign-up sheet that Penny will have in back after the service for the confirmation students. On the fourth Sunday of every month, starting this month for the next 12 months, they're asking for either meals to be brought or money to be donated to provide meals for up to eight. So if you can do that, please sign up on this sign-up sheet and it will be back there. Also, there is a sign-up sheet on the Edith Boyd Lounge left-hand door for Easter breakfast. We haven't done that for three years, but we're going to try to do it this year. So if you can sign up on there, put your name down, and which food item you would graciously bring, we would appreciate it. Um, and the other announcement is, some of you may be aware we have, the church has an AED, an automated external defibrillator, but for those of you that aren't aware, it's when you come in the garden doors and you look straight ahead, there's two glass doors that we don't use anymore. Just to the left of those on the wall is a box about head height, and that contains the defibrillator. So you know where it is. Maybe when you leave today, just look to identify where it is. So if you're ever here and something comes up that we need to get it, more than one person knows where it is. Mm -hmm. And the instructions are in it the minute you begin. Open it. Yep, it tells you what to do. And if you are an individual for whom the AED should not be used, we want to make sure that our deacons and elders and um, those who are helpers in the congregation know. So please identify yourself either to me or um, to any other leaders that we should not use that. My dear friends, as we consider this understanding and this learning and this um, practicing of the, dis the discipline of loving the stranger, we come to this table where all are welcome, um, where the hospitality is high and um, it, is, it is deep and wide, the hospitality is. We are told that they will come um, from north and south east and west to sit at table with the people of God. Everybody, everybody who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ is welcome at this table. So please share with me the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, our God, creator and ruler of the universe. We thank you for your creation, and we thank you for creating us in your image, and even when we rebelled against your image, you sent prophets and martyrs along the way. And then, in the fullness of time, sent Jesus the Christ to seek us, humanity, who were the stranger, to seek us, to live as one of us, to teach of your discipline of love, and to be obedient to the cross. And we remember that sacrifice upon the cross in the breaking of this bread and then the sharing of this cup. And we ask that your Holy Spirit might be upon this bread that we break and this cup that we bless. And may we also ask 
that your Holy Spirit might be upon those who share in this meal. May we remember your salvific love and salvific sacrifice and salvific resurrection in the sharing of this meal. We pray specifically this morning for Joyce Bond, for Dave Dougherty, for Joanna Miller, for Craig Molden, for Jonathan Patterson, for Barb Reichert, and for Thelma Stokes. We pray for Doug Sims. We pray for our military and their families and our AmeriCorps workers and Peace Corps workers and their families. We pray all of this in Christ, through Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We pray this in Christ, who while on this earth did teach us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My dear friends, on the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. And in the same way, he took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you eat of this bread, drink of this cup, you do declare the Lord's life and death and resurrection until he comes again. Come now, the joyful feast of the people of God has now begun.
This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Dear friends, this is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us now sing the prayer after Thanksgiving, our prayer of Thanksgiving after communion. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts. 
hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Before I give our benediction, I would like to communicate to the family of faith um, that Joyce Bond has died um, last night. Um, you know, she's been living with her daughter and um, in great care of hospice and um, of her family. And so we celebrate her life and give thanks for her life and um, give thanks for the resurrection, which gives us hope um, as we consider the loss of our very dear sister. And now, with the courage of our faith, with the courage of loving and learning how to love from the God whose love is stronger than death, let us go out into the world in the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the compassion of the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen, and go in peace.